um, this morning and on this Humanity Sunday, and we continue on with the Genesis text um, from Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28. And, it, and these verses describe the creation of humanity, spell out humans' responsibilities, and introduce metaphor and suggestions on the relationship of creator to human and human to creator. Humans are the first and only creatures described as having divine characteristics. Up until the writing of this text, the Israelites avoided any image for God, but this is not a graven, fixed image like that of some of the Near Eastern religions that surrounded them. Rather, it is a living image. The role of humanity, or the role of the human made in God's image, is to mirror God to the world and to care as God cares. It was not unusual for a king to be seen as someone who was a representative of God, but this text describes and extends this role to all humanity. Therefore, humans are given the power to take up God-given responsibilities. And this means being in relationship in creation and relating in the world as God would. Let's take a moment then to hear this text from Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created the male and the female. God created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the, of, over the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Here ends this reading. And then here this contemporary story, entitled Made from Love, based on this same text. After Creator God created light and sky, oceans and land, plants and trees, lights for the day and for the night, creatures to fill the water and the sky and the earth, God said, Let's have humankind made of our own essence. They'll care for the creatures in the water and on the sky and on the earth and be cared for by these same ones sharing together this life banquet. And so it was. The Creator gave them genders, unique bodies, diverse personalities, and all with one spirit. Seeing the beauty of their souls was like looking in a mirror. The Creator blessed them and said, Fill this world with life as I have filled you with life. Love your siblings, every creature and plant. You were made from love and for love. May love be your being and your doing. Here ends this reading. The Earth story in Genesis 1 was written at a time when the Hebrews were in exile, exiled to Babylon, and they longed, they longed for God to bring order out of the chaos, to live in exile. Can you imagine? To walk along streets that you have no connection with, to see stores that you wouldn't have shopped at before, to be surrounded by people you had no connections with, didn't even know their names, to be in an area that was not considered a home, and was a constant reminder of the grief and loss of what was once ago. And today the world, our creation, is totally out of order. The haze from the fires about west and Canada, the boundary waters, have been a constant 
reminder that trees that towered over the, old, the forest floor are no longer and vegetation must find ways to heal itself once again. A drought that has farmers wondering how cattle will be fed and urban dwellers wondering if grass and city pots will ever come back next year. The severity of storms like Hurricane Ida that maintained a Category 4 status while on landfall, causing massive destruction and floods, not only on the shores of Louisiana, but also as it made its way to New Jersey and New York. The Earth story of Genesis 1 speaks also of humanity's role. Humanity's role with creation and with each other. And that, too, has totally been out of control. The inability for individuals to do their part in this pandemic by either getting vaccinated and or getting tested regularly to ensure that COVID-19 does not continue to spread. Remembering the effects of 9-11 and humanity's our response, our response to such an event. And then ending a 20-year war in Afghanistan with direct linkages to September 11th, the grief, the loss, and the troubling ethnocentrism. This is just a snapshot of what challenges our kinship with creation, and yet what kernels of truth can we hold close as we struggle with the chaos? How many of you have taken a moment during this pandemic to just say, well, I learned a few things. I know I said it, even though I don't like being in it. On this Humanity Sunday, we are encouraged to explore this relationship of mutuality that humans share with all of creation. It also invites us to reflect on how human action impacts Earth and questions what kinds of changes we need to make in our lifestyles, in our attitudes, and even how we do church. How then might we live with respect to creation and in creation? Well, one way can one way humans can live with respect in creation is by recognizing the diversity of life in the ecosystems we inhabit and the ecosystems of our respective cultures. Curiosity in this time outweighs ignorance, asking questions, making changes, understanding that we that what we do as individuals have a direct impact on each other and our earth. And in recognizing that we are connected also lends to elements of hope because that's something I have to hold on to in this moment in time is hope for something more, hope for something better. The loss that this pandemic has brought to light in this time is a deep trauma that each of us at some level are experiencing. Isolation, separation, trying to figure out how we can be connected once again, not only with each other, but with our world, and to do so in safe ways. This is a time in which we have never lived, and yet there is hope and promise of doing things differently. Hope and promise of bringing church to you in this way. Hope and promise of figuring out how to actually go out our doors and say hello to a neighbor we may have never met before, but just because you need some human contact, you go outside and say, hi, neighbor. And it's being intentional about doing that. It's calling someone that you may have not talked to years and saying, hey, how are you doing? And I don't know about you, I find myself scrolling through Facebook more just to check in with how people are doing and connecting. This is a time for us to reevaluate then how we make those connections with each other and with Earth, and how then as humans we can take care of each other. 
When I sat and listened to the 9-11 stories yesterday and, and the story leading up to the anniversary, we can all remember that moment when we saw the planes or heard about the planes or when we got the phone call from someone. We can all remember that moment. And then what happened afterwards? There was prayer vigils. There was tears. There was moments in which we just gathered to be together. How do we take that time to care for each other once again? And to do so in a pandemic-friendly way. I know that we all seem a bit Pollyanna-esque, as I am very aware of the dangers that are before us, and especially as our children go to school and they are unable to be vaccinated. But I'm also very much aware of how human contact with other humans and with creation makes so much difference. How many of you have taken the opportunity to just breathe in the air, or to look at a lake, or to, or to catch a fish, and to marvel of what is around us and how we are connected. So, as we take this time to pause, to reflect, to move through this trauma time, how can we bring order out of the chaos together? How can we find home from exile? How can we be one with earth again? And I think it is through each of you sharing a word of hope with each other. May it be so. Amen. Thank you. 